Lesson 11, we're going to do tuck. Now, I should be discussing using Selector 2 for a single motif on knitwear. But I've already done this. I did this when we talked about Selector 2 a little bit more in detail. So I am not going to use another video to talk about the same thing for the second time. What I'm going to do is I am going to move on to tuck stitch. There are three different tuck stitch patterns. There's your basic tuck, tuck lace, and then multicolor tuck. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to get started with a little bit of reading. When doing a tuck stitch pattern, none of the variation buttons are pushed. You can use selector one or selector two. There is an entire slew of patterns already on, on the machine. There is no special threading. No special cast on. Still have to do the turn mark. Program your pattern. You want to use KC1 for the most part. But if you're doing tuck lace, you will use KC2. I'm going to move this up. Now I'm going to read this here. Set the carriage knob to KC1. Move the K carriage from left to right across the left turn mark. You only need to operate the K carriage across the turn mark once when you start pattern knitting. The needles are selected. Number one flashes on and off in the display to tell you that to knit the first row of pattern. Remove your sinker plate and move the rubber wheels towards the carriage. You also want to put down your um, weaving and tuck brushes. And I will uh, show you that when we start actually knitting. I'm going to push both tuck buttons at the same time. Move the K carriage back and forth. You are now knitting in tuck stitch. The number in the display tells you the number of the row you are going to knit next. You can either continue and repeat five, I mean, repeat steps five and six, or finish pattern knitting. Uh, knit pattern until you hear the beep. If you are operating the kicker edge right to left, you will hear the sound. Finish the row, knit one more row. Number one flashes on and off the display. You have now knitted one complete pattern length. So, yeah, you can wait until you actually have the number one in there. Cool. Okay. One thing to keep note of when it comes to tuck stitch, you have stitches in A, so, I mean, go from A, stitches in B position, and stitches in D position. Stitches in D position are the ones that knit. Stitches in B position get a loop put on them, like a... Uh, uh, they are not knit off, they are passed over. So um, when you have a tuck stitch pattern, you will never have more than one stitch um, in B position at any given time. I hope that makes sense. But in the meantime, we are going to load up pattern 240. And we will get knitting on it. One of the things to note, tuck stitch patterns in the Stitch World book, you have primarily black and a little bit of white. So the black stitches are the ones that come outward. They get knit in stocking stitch. And the white, white ones are the ones that get tucked. I hope that makes sense. Ready? 
pause this and get some yarn. All right, just like in the manual, okay, carriage is on the left. Sorry. Taking off the sinker plate. Just to be nice, I put the uh, brushes back on for you guys. Remove the rubber wheels and tuck and weaving brushes outside the turn mark. Put your sinker plate back on. KC1, bring it back, pick up your yarn, close the door, knit across to the right. Push your tuck buttons. And now knit. I'm going to reset my go counter here. Okay, I'm going to move my camera so you can see what it's doing. Okay, so what you can see here is those are back. These are forward. We're going to knit across and then we'll take another photo. Now I want you to look really, really carefully. You'll see here, those are knit and this one has a loop and a loop and a loop. And those are all looped. I'm going to knit another row and show you again. Oops. All knit. All knit. All knit. So this pretty much knits butterflies. Pretty cool, eh? So there's another close-up. Okay, we're going to go on to uh, tuck lace and uh, carry on. All right, now we move on to tuck lace. So we're going to program in pattern 292. Step, cancel, 292, step, step. All right, so the procedure's still the same. I'll go outside the left turn mark. And uh, it'll be selector one. It'll kick out the needles and then we go to KC2 instead of KC1. Same procedure with the rubber wheels and the weaving brushes and going into tuck. However, we will have to move around some of the needles. We need to bring the end needles forward to D position if they are not already in that position. We will be moving the K carriage back and forth. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, here's the most important part. This is why you need Stitch World. Bring the needles marked with an O in the diagram in Stitch World forward to E position and back to A position. So what one does is one puts them out of work. I hope that makes sense. I will set up the pattern and show you where the instructions are in Stitch World. Okay, so this is 292. You can see how um, it wants you to have the 
last two out of work. And then one, two, three, four, five, six in work. Is it easy to figure that out? Sure. I could have had the, um, in the pattern selector where it starts, be my last needle if I wanted to. But what I will do is I will um, move my camera up so you can see my next step, steps here. Okay, we're going to try this again. So it says starts at yellow four. So one, two, three, four. Fourth stitch. Goes back. Fifth stitch goes back. And then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Fourth stitch. Fifth stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then this one goes back. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one, and this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one, and this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Takes out that one. All right. So those are out. Back over here. AC2. Come back around. Hmm. Okay. I don't see any difference. We'll just knit this. I'm not seeing any difference. We're in KC2. Oh. Okay. Let's try that again. So. Now we're actually ready. We're going to knit across. And see if we get an uh, improvement here. Okay. Pushing our tuck buttons. Putting away my transfer tool. Let's see what happens now. Double check with our manual. Ooh. You can see that we're getting the elongated stitch here. All right. I'm going to go through this pattern at least twice and we'll see what we get, but I'll do it off camera. 
So there we go. That's it starting. Okay, so with tuck lace, um, you can be the rock star of the of your knitting circle, making baby afghan scarves, and they look extremely technical, but are so beautiful. I'm going to knit a couple rows of stock and stitch. And then you can see what this looks like on the other side. All right, so basic tuck on the knit side looks like crap. But tuck lace looks a lot different. This is tuck lace from the pearl, uh, from the knit side. Turn it around again. This is the pearl side. Little butterflies and beautiful lace. Next up, two color tuck. All right, what is two color tuck? Two color tuck is basically single bed jacquard, just so you're clear. This really opens up the gateway to knitting jacquard um, successfully. So we are going to load in pattern 296. 296 is this one. Except the yarn is changed according to the number in the MIMO display. Pattern 296 requires the yarn in two colors, color 1 and color 2. And these are represented by the numbers 1 and 2 in the MIMO display. So to start, decide which yarn corresponds with which number. If you have a color changer, this is the time to use it. Number one or number two. If you find that your color changer keeps giving you two yarns, go number one and number three or number one and number four. Before starting knitting the pattern, thread the yarn into the right hand tension unit, cast on, knit a few rows, program your pattern, thread yarn two, KC1, move the K carriage from left to right across the turn mark, you only need to operate the K carriage once, move your rubber wheels, and you will see needles pop out, push both tuck buttons, move the K carriage across, so back and forth until the number two appears in the MIMO display. Number three in the display and number two in the MIMO display tell you to knit the third row with yarn two. Take yarn one out of the feeder A. If you slide the K carriage slightly to the right of the, the yarn can be removed easily. Hook yarn one around the little notch on, on the uh, side of the bed. Thread yarn two into feeder A and continue knitting until number one appears in the Mimo display. Continue knitting, changing the yarns according to the number in the Mimo display. When you change the yarns, take care not to cross them over each other. Knit in pattern until you hear the beep sound. If you're operating the car carriage from right to left, when you hear the sound, finish the row and knit one more row. Number one flashes on and off in the display. You have now knitted one complete length. All right. So we are going to try and get this pattern here. I have two contrasting colors loaded up and ready to go. We're going to start with loading our pattern. So step. Cancel, 296, step, step. So is it already telling me in the MIMO display? I start with yarn number one. So that's what we're going to do. Outside the left turn mark. Sorry, my yarn's getting caught there. 
Casey one. Coming across. All right, it is flashing. Pushing the tuck buttons. Let me read this carefully one more time. So we started casting on a few rows or outside left turn mark, hung our claw weights, program is in, yarn two is in, we did the turn mark. We've knit across, everything's engaged, tuck buttons are engaged. Move the K carriage back and forth until the number two comes up. So let's go this way. Okay. Number three will be displayed. Remove the yarn. Put it into the hold. Grab the new yarn. Knit two rows. And two. Other yarn. This yarn, knit two, swap, try not to get it caught on your cast on comb. Close it. Next one. All right, so I'm going to finish knitting this and then we'll see what we get. All right, so you see a really, really awesome looking pattern on this side. We're going to knit a couple stitches of stockinette again. And then we'll take it off and you'll see what the good side looks like. Now, if it doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what will. Because this is pretty darn cool. I used this uh, pattern variation to make an entire sweater for a small child. Up next, we're going to apply tuck to a project. 